Welcome to one of the loveliest settings of any race site around the world as we greet you at the start of official qualifying, just moments away from kicking off the start of two official qualifying sessions to determine who is fastest and who will start from pole position here on the lovely shores of Lac Lamois for today's 20th Grand Prix of France. Hi everybody, I'm your host Steve Michael and sitting here next to me is my partner of 16 years, the many time world champion Jonathan Jones. And on a warm sun soaking morning, we are just about ready to kick off our official BRM qualifying day. But before we get to all the drama, let's set the stage for the weekend by giving you a postcard view of this lovely area on the footsteps of the French Alps here in Evian, France. Elegantly perched on the border between France and Switzerland, northeast of Geneva in the East French Alps, Evian's internationally renowned healing waters have lured health conscious visitors from around the world since 1824. It's France's most celebrated spa resort. But this is only the beginning. There are so many must-sees on your tour to Evian. Start by going to the famous water and musical gardens, followed by a trip to the thermal spa. Then try your luck at the largest theme casino in Europe. And how about a 35 minute boat trip across the lake to the lovely Riviera town of Lausanne on the Swiss side. Evian recently won the award for the best resort in France by the World Travel Awards judging the total beauty, the proximity to summer and winter activities all along with its famous healing waters adding up to one of Europe's must see areas. Feel more culture, feel more water, Feel more relaxation. Feel more fun. Feel Evian France. Well, it's been two straight days of strong winds and choppy waves forcing a cancellation of yesterday's qualifying. We had a chance to talk with race commissioner Luis Ribeiro about the situation. Yes, uh, the weather forecast was uh, changing uh, quite a lot in the, um, in the last three days. And um, even for, uh, for Saturday, was uh, three days ago, was looking nice, but it was changing. It was impossible today to, to do the qualifying. And uh, we tried with the free practice in the morning, but qualifying was impossible. What we're going to do tomorrow is start really early in the morning, 8.30, with the free practice and then uh, if the weather conditions uh, remain uh, safe uh, for, uh, for the qualifying in race, make the, the qualifying on the different uh, concept uh, from normal, only with Q1 and Q2, and try to make a race on the afternoon on the same schedule. for this 2016 campaign and back in March it was a battle to the final lap of the afternoon to determine who would claim pole position in the inner harbor of the dynamic Dubai race circuit in the United Arab Emirates. Here's a quick look back at how the final Q3 competitors battled it out for a two lap shootout for the number one trophy setting up the fastest time at the Grand Prix of Dubai. There were heavy winds from the east running along this 1.96 kilometer five pin circuit in Dubai and 18 drivers from 11 different countries were battling for pole position and it came down to these final three as Jonas Anderson of Sweden came out and did a 41.78, 172 kilometer lap and then Alex Corella, the three time world champion from Team Abu Dhabi, he came around the circuit and he went faster. He did a 41.61. He only had one other driver to wait for to see if he could get the pole. And coming out is Philippe Shep, the two-time world champion. As Alex Corella holding his breath, last chance, last corner, second lap. Philippe Shep came up with the fast time of the afternoon with a 41.36, his fifth career pole position. Alex Corella could not believe it. And Philippe Shep would start from pole position, hugs around from the CTIC China team. Philippe Shep, number one in Dubai. Well, Jonathan, let's bring you in here. Let's get deeper into the discussion of the makeup of this race circuit and try to explain to the viewers what makes this ever-changing and hair-raising racing conditions on one of Europe's largest lakes so tricky for the drivers to navigate on. Yeah, as we know, see, the weather's been bad. Water is slowly but surely calming down, and I think come the time of the race later on this afternoon, it'll be fine. But back to the circuit itself, it's um, six turn boys. We've got one right-hand turn boy and, of course, uh, five left-handers. 
areas to look out for between two and three and five and six down the far end of the circuit because it's still rough there. And it's the guy that's got the biggest whatever that's going to do. Well here because you've really got to hang the boat out and just take a chance. And you know, with the water as it has been, Steve, that can be risky. Well, a large field of 20 drivers from 11 different countries have come here this weekend with dreams of winning the 20th Grand Prix of France. Let's take a look at the total field. As you can see, the drivers coming through here, and this is the first time we've had 20 drivers on the circuit for over a year, so it's pretty exciting to take a look at the names. Alex Corella is going to be strong today. He'd love to win, as he was disqualified a year ago. Philippe Shep, who had the pole last year and was leading in the race as, uh, as a driver we're going to keep an eye on, but Leo Zhuang, his teammate in that number two boat, well, I'll tell you something. He finished fifth in the first race in Dubai, just missed making it to the top six shootout, and he's going to be strong here as well. So Sami Selio, well, he's in a new boat, a brand new boat, and uh, he had a problem with uh, the uh, gas tank leakage, so he decided to switch to the new boat first time he's tried it out. Now let's get into this a little bit, Jonathan. Let's talk about how this format's going to work. A little different today. Here's the official rundown for BRM qualifying as it unfolds. And today, because of yesterday's cancellation, we have for you in the next hour, you'll see two qualifying sessions unfold, beginning with Q1, which we've just started, which is a 20-minute session. We will eliminate eight of the slowest drivers on the field. Now, following a short 10-minute intermission, we'll bring the re remaining field out on the circuit, and they will have 30 minutes in Q2 to have their shootout and determine who will be on pole position and lead this field for today's 20th Grand Prix of France. And we go on board. Well, there is the pole sitter of a year ago. The question is, can he do it again here for the second time, Jonathan? Well, you know, I think that this year, a lot more drivers are a lot more prepared. He's been the benchmark chap for the last couple of years, but now Sean Torrente with the uh, victory team out of Dubai, they've got one of the new Moore boats, and in fact, David Moore is working with them throughout the year to try and get them some good results. And in uh, pre-qualifying this morning, Torrente was very, very quick. At the moment, Jonas Andersen from Sweden, he's leading. Torrente now up into second, point one four behind. Alex Carella from the Abu Dhabi team there, half a second. Sami Selio, who's running his, year, his last year's boat, mainly Steve, because I think he knows that boat better in these tough, tough conditions. And I think that's why he switched back, because he did very, very little testing with that new boat. So Sami there, he's up there in fourth position. Al Hamli fifth. Thani Al Kwamzi, which was his teammate in the Abu Dhabi team a few years ago, he's in sixth. Roms, that young driver who's doing a cracking job there with Team Sweden, up to seventh. Uh, Eric Stark in eighth. We're expecting a lot more from him. So it's, it's all to play for, Steve. Yeah, and of course, remember in this first 20-minute uh, session, we will eliminate eight drivers to the bottom eight. So this is a bit of a poker hand, Jonathan. You're not showing your fastest because you want to wait and do that in Q2, the final session of this, this morning. And uh, right now, you just want to slide yourself up into the top 12. And I think Jonas Anderson with that 4714 has got to feel pretty pleased. Sean Torrente, of course, hasn't showed his best, and Alex Corrales. So the usual suspects right now are up there. A good run by Dwarf Benevente so far in that fifth position, as you mentioned. And uh, some of the youngsters were waiting for Ivan Brigada. He hasn't come out yet. Cedric DeGeen hasn't made his way out. And Mike Shimura in your boat right now, Jonathan, it just uh, threw out his first lap time. He's currently in that 15th spot, but he's just warming it up. Yeah, he seems to be running well. I don't want to put too much pressure on him. We've picked him up there, Steve. That's uh, the dragon boat that we built in uh, West Wales. And, you know, I just want the boy to take his time. This is the first real race that he's been in. And uh, he's shown well in testing down with us in Cardigan, Wales. And uh, I'm really hopeful that we can do a great job come, uh, come middle to probably the end of the season. Well, you see on the left mirror, and we're going to have that on all the uh, driver's boats as we salute the victims of the uh, tragedy down in East France with the black ribbon in remembrance of what happened this uh, past couple of days ago. So uh, we uh, want to uh, take our time out to uh, console the families as we come back to this racing effort here. See uh, Jonas Anderson still with the quickest time. We're about eight minutes into this first a 20 minute session. Again, this is a little different. Normally we do three sessions with a top six shootout. We don't do that today because remember, later on this afternoon at one o'clock UTC, three o'clock local time, we will have for you 
the 20th Grand Prix of France. So we're doing a double header today. Everybody's scrambling to get their boats first set up for qualifying and then at the same time. <laughs> Get their race start and their racing face on for later in the afternoon. Yeah, and we can see, oh dear, Mike Zamuda there, he's stopped on the far end of the circuit and uh, let's hope that he hasn't got too, a technical problem there. Everything's been running very smoothly with that boat and uh, oh, he's on the circuit itself, so he's obviously got some kind of issue out there. Well, that's too bad. It's a shame for the uh, young German driver who is a rookie and of course he has dominated in every class that he has run up to this point. And uh, there you get to see uh, number three. That is a long time, many time world champion. His yellow flag is out now. And oh, he's away again, Steve. So <laughs> I don't know, maybe switch the fuel pump off or something like that. But uh, thank goodness he's, uh, he's back with a pack, as we say. Well, the race commissioner, Luis Ribeiro, under caution, wants to make sure that the, uh, the boat was not in harm's way. So he threw the caution flag out. and as timing would have it, just as he did, Mike Shamira took off again. So we'll see how long the yellow flag will wave here. Clock continues to click, however. We're almost at the halfway point of Q1. And uh, right now, really no surprises as we are going to eliminate the bottom eight of this huge field of 20 drivers. It's great to get uh, the numbers back up here, Jonathan. You know, it's uh, always a pleasure to have 20-plus uh, boats fighting in any Grand Prix. Yeah, and at the moment, Jonas Anderson there, he's 1.4 seconds ahead of Sean Torrente in that new Moore boat. Alex Carell in the DAC third, Sammy Sellio in the Baba fourth. And Benevente showing well this weekend here. He's in fifth position, running another Moore boat from France. So as the field now gets the green flag back out. They go in anger as they go racing around this race course here in uh, Lac Lamar. And this was a tremendously stirred up lake the last couple of days after the rainstorm came through but now things are settling down some and we're really starting to see some speeds pick up for the first time really in this weekend we're seeing speeds under a 50 second lap and 47 one four by Jonas Anderson as we continue to look at uh, Ben Hindi who's in his second season the driver for the victory team a 46 year old out of Dubai who had uh, 13 pole positions and uh, Class one is a three time uh, pole position champion, but that's all in offshore. And he made the transition last year into Formula One, and he still uh, has run uh, very few laps in his career, so he's still on a huge learning curve. Yeah, but he's doing a good job, Steve. I mean, you know, as you say, he's come from offshore to inshore, which is a very, very different animal altogether. And uh, yesterday, oh, we've Don't got a boat there that's been over. Oh, the canopy has come off, as has the engine cowl, as uh, we've got a problem out on the race course. As we look at Leo Zhuang, Leo Zhuang, the driver out of China, the second member of the CTIC China team, and of course a teammate of Philippe Shep. So the youngster, who is only in his 20th career start. Oh, look at the fuel pouring out of the side of there. You can see the regulator, the fuel comes up, up the side of the engine. And if we can just take a shot there of that, oh, he switched the fuel pump off now. But there's an accident on that on that corner there between the young Chinese driver and uh, it's I think it's the number 12 boat, Steve. Yes, it is. So Leo Zhuang now pushing himself out of the cockpit. The youngster, as you see him, and uh, this is his 20th Grand Prix race. He's got 17 career points. More importantly, though, he was on a rhythm, Jonathan. He did really well in Dubai when we started the series back in uh, March. He qualified seventh. He finished fifth. Let's get a look at this here as he goes down into turns number five. Short shoot down into turn number six as he circles around. And he tries to settle oh. the boat, and he couldn't hold it, Jonathan. And he barrel rolls it upside down as he goes over heavily. He landed upright, which was good. And uh, you can see the cowling ripping right off the engine as well as the uh, canopy on the back. So uh, just uh, caught it, and he couldn't settle the boat down in the right spots, and it kept on rolling. Yeah, that's very unfortunate for him because he's made some serious progress over the last couple of Grand Prix. And uh, it basically, it was one of these rogue waves that comes onto the circuit. And as he came into that corner, lining himself up for a fast lap, 
Um, he caught the outside sponson in one of those waves, and of course, that was it. He had no, he had no chance. The boat barrel rolled, but uh, fortunately, it looks like it's all in one piece, um, and with a bit of. <laughs> If they can get it back, it'll, he'll be out for this afternoon for the uh, for the main event itself. The only problem there is obviously he's going to start at the back of the field now because uh, you know they've had to stop the race because the boat had gone over. Well, he was found by Eric Chan, the team manager for CTIC China team in Shenzhen years ago when he was putting on a drifting uh, car demonstration, and he was asked if he'd like to try some boat racing, and he said, "Sure, why not? I'll give it a try." He was only 19 years old when he started back in 2010 when he was putting on the demonstrations and he still does that at home, Jonathan. He is one of the best drifting drivers on pavement in China and he does some television work as well. So uh, Leo Zhuang, who is a youngster, he's only 24 years old, has uh, got a pretty good career going for himself and right now He's going to have to sit back and figure out, uh, first of all, how much damage there is to that boat and how fast they can put it together because we got qualifying and racing today all at once. And, uh, you know, we're looking at about uh, four and a half hours, Jonathan, before the Grand Prix officially starts this afternoon. Yeah, exactly. But they've got time. There's no question about that. They've got some very, very good technicians that work in that team, CTIC China. And I've just seen the boat passing us here now, Steve. I don't think there's any damage on it. The rear cowling came off, but the rest of the boat's okay. And of course, because it barrel rolled and, right did, and it landed the right way, they didn't get too much water in the electrics and you know things like that, which caused all sorts of problems. The other thing, of course, there's no water in the fuel tank, uh, which means that probably an hour, hour and a half or so, as you can see the boat there, and, and it should be fine. They probably have to change that power head because uh, uh, they don't want to see that there's water gone in there when it turned over and it could have hydraulic. So uh, another power head and uh, he, should be, he should be good to go. Tens of thousands of people expected this afternoon as they worked their way here. And uh, we've had great crowds over the years here in France. All right, well, of course, uh, Leo Zhuang has had a history of going over. Now, technically, He's had two accidents in his career, but in qualifying, oh my, he's put on a great show. That was, of course, back in the Emirates. That was one of his first races ever, and this was in qualifying in uh, Sharjah. And bearing in mind, do you see how quick he got out of that boat? <laughs> Probably took him about a quarter of a second, and he had to undo his harness, undo his, uh, his radio connection, and uh, work his way out of the cockpit. That didn't take long. You see the Osprey team there. Uh, they come to every Grand Prix with us. They've been around for probably 40 years or so. Highly specialized people there. Usually get to uh, an accident within a matter of seconds, 10, 15 seconds. They have uh, doctors on board, paramedics. And there you can see again, oh boy. That was in Yet China. That was in China a year ago. And he was doing the same thing in Leo Zhou. He caught the sponson. He turned the boat too quickly. The boat failed to set and he went over. And uh, it was almost a recreation of what we saw. We're back to the green flag, Jonathan as we watch the replay one more time from Leo Zhou. And uh, so Leo Zhuang is gonna dry off. And we compare that with what he just did here moments ago, almost identical. So uh, obviously a little bit exuberant as he goes into those left-hand 90 degree corners. Now we'll take a look at some of the drivers here at the three quarter mark that are in danger of not going on to the final Q2 session. And Marit Stromoy is one of them. She's down in the 13th position. She's about a half a second behind Francesco Catando. Now remember, Marit Stromoy has a career pole position. She did that in Portimao back in uh, 2011 and is hoping to uh, recreate that this afternoon. As uh, Marit Stromoy, when she started, uh, in Evian, last year she qualified in measly 14th, and in Dubai she qualified in the eighth position. So she needs to pick up a half a second to leapfrog Francesco Catando, who right now is right in the bubble. He is on the bubble right now. So uh, can Marit Stromoy do it in this Baba boat that she's been working on for the last three months? They've been fine tuning the boat, a continuation, working with Massimo Ruggiero as well. Yeah, so on the bubble at the moment, we've got Cantando, Stromoy, Bin Hendy from the Victory team, Mike Simura and uh, Larry Go, uh, the French driver, and also 
right at the back at the moment in that 17th position is De Geen, Jasper Forbes again behind him and Bartek Marzalak who's had some kind of issues with that boat uh, this weekend, all weekend hasn't even got onto the water which is a shame Here's the youngest driver in Formula 1 Philippe Roms, just 22 years old <laughs> Finland. He's the teammate on that Baba Racing team with two-time world champion Sami Salio. Right now, Roms is hanging in there. He's in the 11th position, and he is about uh, eight tenths of a second ahead of of uh, the driver who was in that 13th spot. And Reed Stromo has dropped down to 14. Mike Shimura, your driver, is up to 13th position in your boat. But really, for Philippe Roms. He qualified 14th in Dubai to start the season, finished in the ninth position, and for Rams, for him, he is hoping to uh, get himself up into a position where he can move on in the top 12. But uh, right now he's there. Can he hold it? That's the big question. Yeah, he's running well at the moment. He's 2.69 seconds off pole position, which is, believe it or not, Philip Chiap. 0.53 behind him now, Jonas Anderson, Torrente in third in that second more boat, 0.67. Carella uh, in the DAC, Al Hamley in the Barber, that's the first Barber we've got uh, on, on the, that's doing well there this afternoon. Benavente still hanging on there in seventh, Al Kwamzi in eighth, and Leo Zhuang was in ninth, what a shame. Yeah, Francesco Catando, here is the driver from Italy. He is the veteran. He's had 158 starts in his career. He's got four pole positions. Right now, Catando is outside the top 12, and we're less than a minute to go. He's got to scramble now. He's got to get himself back in. He was bumped from that 12th position. He's now down into 13th position as Marit Stromoy jumps up into the top 12. She's hoping against hope that she can hang on. Catando now desperately trying to hold on to stay up into this top 12 and move on to Q2. There we see him, Steve, just taking the right-hander on the far end of the circuit, coming now down into the last but one turn, boy. Conditions are not as good as they were earlier on, and it looks like we've got a... Are we got a... No, it's OK, Cantando coming over the line. Where is he? Did he 13th. move up? Did he move up? No, he didn't. Mike Samura now move it up to 14th. Ben Hendy down to 15th. What a shame. Catando gave it his best shot. He was about nine tenths of a second slower than what he had done previously with a 49.67. So Francesco Catando, the most veteran of drivers here, running in his 20th season as we look down and see uh, Marit Strumoy. Strumoy has fought herself up into the top 12. She slides in in the last minute, Jonathan, to make it into that top 12, and she will move on to Q2 in that 30-minute battle for pole position. What a great uh, finish. We expect that from Marie Stromoy. She gives us the drama every time. Just when you think she's not going to make it, boom, she's back in. Yeah, you know, we've seen that before. Do you remember when we were in Portugal, when she got that pole position a couple of years ago, Steve? She was sort of nowhere, and then bang, she put in one fast lap, got into the final uh, session, and after that then uh, managed to get pole position and led that race for some time. Tell you what, some of the biggest news going on in the weekend as we start our 10-minute uh, break, as we wait to get going for Q2 as the rest of the boats come in. Biggest news of the weekend in the paddock was coming from the victory team, and it has to do with Sean Torrente getting a brand new Moore boat. Let's hear more from Sean Torrente about these changes and what Philippe Shep had to say. Yeah, being still, a, I would say, a new team in Formula One, we're constantly evolving, and... Uh, I think we've taken a big step forward over the last three months. Um, the agreements we made with uh, David Moore and Moore Formula and, and the uh, engine work done back at Victory and Dyno installed and all the things that have moved forward there. It's, uh, it's really exciting times here. Yeah, it's more than just the driver. It's a complete package, isn't it? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's, you know, like I always say, it's my job as a driver if I have a third place boat to try to get a win. Um, and in Dubai, we didn't have that and we still got a podium. So. Um, I think we've done, I've done a fairly good job there and now um, as we evolve and I think we continue to improve, we'll be fighting for some wins hopefully starting this weekend. Uh, you have, um, I think, a good uh, deal with the Victory team and uh, it's a life and uh, I'm very happy for him. And uh, for us, we do uh, work uh, strong for stay on the top. A true professional, Philippe Shep, knowing he literally lost one of his closest friends who moved over to the victory team. It's almost like losing your girlfriend. And he, yeah. 
I mean, I, I know what you mean, Steve, but, you know, we've got David DeWalt who makes the propellers for a lot of these teams here, props all of them. And, you know, he works for the Abu Dhabi team, but he also gives a very, very good service at, with equal equipment to all the other teams. And, uh, you know, with David Moore, like uh, Sean said, it's all about the package. Now, bear in mind the victory... <laughs> team they were really on the back foot up until this race because they they created this team pretty much last minute but now they've got a good engine program going they've set up a new dyno so everything's working well there the guys are beginning to understand the boats a lot more understand the propellers and sean as we know he will always give his all and uh, you know that's going to be a team to be reckoned with in 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 the near future and there you see david moore in the white hat in the left and he is uh with uh, Air Falls of Fiend on the right and uh, discussing. Now he is the new ears for Sean Torrente. He is working with Sean, he's talking with him. He's a great strategist, so it'll be interesting to see how it all plays out. And also, Jonathan, think about what happened last year when the Victory team desperately tried to buy a David Moore Formula Two boat to get Sean into it because they really didn't have a competitive boat that they, th they thought they could run through for the year. Yeah, I mean, you know, you uh, for the last two or three years, Philippe Chap has uh, has done exceptionally well in that boat. But you know, it's not only been the boat. Like I said, I mean, Chap he's got a his own uh, propeller program, which is uh, run by a guy called Roland from uh, Scandinavia. Alex Ledden's doing the engines and uh, done a cracking job with that. So it's all about that package. And Philippe leading from the front there's the team manager. You know, he's, he's got everybody well put together. And it's shown already today with Chiap right up there. But Torrente, he's, <laughs> he's snapping at his heels, isn't he? He's not far behind. Let's take a look at the standings. This is what happened in Q1 as we wait to start our final session of the day, Q2. And uh, as we look at the crowds here, here's how it panned out. Philippe Shep setting a 46-6-1, uh, and he was uh, about a half a second faster than Jonas Anderson. Sean Torrente with Alex Corella a second back with Ahmed Al Hamli, who has returned after getting the doctor's clearance to come back into racing, he missed the Dubai event 1.3 seconds back. And then uh, as you work your way down to the final standings, of course, uh, the top 12, Marit Stromoy sliding herself into it. Philip Roms held on. So uh, good to see both members of that Baba racing team getting into the top 12 and the 22-year-old uh, getting stronger and stronger. Now remember, Philip Roms had his first and only podium finish here a year ago in France. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, we're looking there at, as you say, Roms in 11th position. Um, we're looking at uh, Leo Zhuang in ninth, another young driver. And it's great to have these guys coming up from the smaller classes. And we do have a feeder class here. It's called Formula 4S. And uh, some of those drivers, they spend two or three years in Formula 4. And then they go on a test program um, with some of the top Formula 1 teams. And, you know, that they slowly but surely bring them into Formula 1. And, uh, and they are, slowly but surely, as I said earlier, working their way up to the top of the field. But we still have the same guys, really, right there at the sharp end. You've got Chiap, Jonas brilliant driver from Sweden there. Uh, Torrente, who's slowly moving his way up and he's in that third position. Carella, probably not happy with fourth position, Steve, and uh, there's quite a gap between him and the lead boat. Tell you what, the returning driver, Ahmed El Hamli, now he qualified so far fifth quickest. He had a memorable experience here a year ago on the lake, and I don't think he wants to forget about the whole experience. Let's hear from him. I cannot hear you, Steve. What did you say? You became an airplane pilot. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, it was, you know, as it is uh, today, uh, it's rough water and uh, a crash is uh, one of the best points in the Formula One races. I mean, it's uh, not strength. I mean. But uh, everyone at that time, we want to be in the top six. It shot out uh, the most important part in the race. So. At that time, I, wa I was, I don't have any time, only one minute to go. So I keep pushing hard and I hit one of the big waves for uh, transfer, uh, shipping, uh, transferring boats. Crash is uh, something normal in the Formula One. Well, that was a hard hit and you saw how that the front end, the nose piece was just torn off the carbon fiber when it hit 
upside down at such great speeds. Yeah, and, uh, and all credit to him at the moment in that fifth position. I mean, he got out there quite early in the session, Steve. He was the first guy out there, and uh, I think he had some good clear water, and uh, that's down to experience, and, uh, you know, he's, he's, he's looking strong. Tell you what, talking about a strong accident, we just saw one from the 24-year-old from... <laughs> in China. Liu Zhuang is the second member of that CTIC China team. Sliding down into turn number six, the final turn. He only had 120 meters from five into six. Try to settle the boat. Let's take a look at a few angles here, Jonathan. Yeah, you can see him there just coming in and oh, he catches that sponson, the outside sponson um, on, on, a, on a quite a bad wave there. It's, it's really difficult on these corners to know quite how to push. But what you need to do, Steve, is keep that boat on top of the water. If that boat starts digging in and uh, as it goes around the corner, you could see there the fuel spurting out. So there could have been a fire there as he goes over again. But like I said earlier, it's very he's very fortunate that he's come up the right way. Very little damage on the boat, just the rear cowling and, uh, you know, with a with another power head, um, and he's looking good there in the rescue boat, probably very upset. But with another power head on there, he'd, he'd be good to go for the race and probably a guy to watch out for this afternoon. If luck is with him, he could be one of the leading drivers. Yeah, you saw him uh, waving to his teammate, Philippe Shep, who is going by him. And he says, hey, everything's okay, I'm fine. It wasn't a drastic hit, it was a slow roll. And um, for him, you know, they're gonna have to work fast to get him ready. Less than two minutes now, Jonathan, from the start of Q2. Now again, let me remind everybody who follows us around the world as we go through qualifying. Since this is race day, and we're doing this in the morning, we have a one hour session. We've changed the format just a touch. Now we're going to Q2. And that will be it. We're not going to go to a Q3 top six shootout. Instead, we're going to Q2. We're taking the top 12 drivers of the 20 that have entered here today, and they will have 30 minutes, a full half hour, to strut their stuff and look for fame and glory to grab pole position here on Lac Lamoine. Yeah, and who's it going to be, Steve? Um, is it going to be Chap like last year? He's looking strong again. There's no question about it. He's very confident and very calm, isn't he? Um, you know, he knows now that David Moore is working with the victory team this year. Um, and I, I would guess he's fairly upset about that, as you said earlier, because, you know, they're both French. They've both been together for a long time. And there's been some kind of aggravation there. We can't get down to the, uh, to the gist of what has happened. But uh, I know that uh, something's not quite right. And uh, Moore's obviously been offered a lot of money with the, uh, the big buck victory team. And uh, he's... he's taking the choice to go there. All right, the whistle sounds, the clock starts. The Q2 final session, 30 minutes long to determine who will get pole position. It's go time here, Jonathan. Knockout qualifying on Lac Lamoire. Yep, this is really where it counts because pole position here is just gonna be so important because you've got the shortest run into the first turn, boy. And um, if we look back at uh, Chiap over the last three or four Grand Prix, my goodness, if he gets pole position, he goes off that line like a rocket. But, you know, we've got Sammy Celio, who's looking strong again. He's running that boat that he knows very well from last year, uh, using one of Alex Ledden's engines again, and, uh, you know, hopeful that uh, he can put on a better show because he had some bad luck last year. There's no question about it. But first out on the circuit, we've got Jonas Anderson taking a nice wide line there, Steve, as he straightens up for his first qualifying lap. Jonas Anderson coming out, trying to take the full advantage of clear water and he will be a factor in this qualifying as Jonas Anderson started off the season well finished up in the top three and Sean Torrente right behind Jonas Anderson this long straight Jonathan there's a bit of a kink but it's 360 meters into almost 600 meters so it's literally almost a thousand uh, meters down the front chute yeah, yeah, you can see Jonas really hanging the boat out there, almost losing control. You see the ro what the rollers are doing? They're making those boats bounce on top of the water. And you've really got to be on top of your game because you've got to run with as little of the boat in the, wa in the water as possible to cut down the drag. Nice corner by Jonas there, coming into the last but one turn, throws it around again, it, through the last turn, and Steve down past the finish line, and he does a... 
46.96, that's quicker than he did in the uh, in the first session. Conditions looking really good here at the moment. I think we're gonna see some lot faster times. All right, and Trente a little bit slower with a 47.33. Now that's three tenths of a second slower. And let's see if he can hold that second spot and try to move up with Philippe Shep. We're still waiting for him. He's out there right now, as is Alex Corella. As you see the three-time world champion now sliding himself out of turn number six. Pounds it down the front straight away. Let's check Alex Corella. What kind of time did he get? He's third quick. He's a half a second behind Jonas Anderson. Early on, we're just two and a half minutes in, and these drivers are trying to set the pace early, Jonathan. Yeah, Anderson, he said he's had a good um, engine program this year. Um, he said he's got, lot, hopefully, a lot more reliability. He's found some decent horsepower, some good torque on this Mercury V6 2.5 engine, and he was very, very hopeful. So it's beginning to show at the moment, 0.37 ahead of Torrente, Carella third. Philippe Chap, he did a sighting lap the last time round, so it's going to be interesting to see whether he can move up. He's on the far end of the circuit at the moment, Steve. He's trying to pick his water, and, you know, there's a strong possibility that he may have lost that clean water that he needed to get pole position. We'll have to wait and see as we take a look at Alex Corella, second in this championship. He started second in Dubai. He finished second in Dubai. He came very close to closing the gap on the eventual winner, our two-time uh, world champion, Philippe Chef. He didn't quite have just enough to get close enough as Philippe Shep in Dubai left him at the start. He got eight bolt lengths ahead of him on that very first lap. And then on the restart, after Jesper Forrest went over on that 27th lap, it was his second opportunity to catch the Frenchman, and he could not do it. Yeah, yeah, that was really nip and tuck, wasn't it? Marvelous. See Jonas Anderson now cruising off the circuit. Is he going to go in maybe and change and put another propeller on as we pick up uh, the young Swedish driver, Eric Stark? Very, very fast. Had a few accidents last year. Very short DAC boat, wide in the tunnel. I would say a hell of a handful out here, Steve, with these uh, tough conditions. Eric Stark out in the water. Now, he qualified fourth in Dubai and dropped out early. He was classified 14th with a did not finish. So he's got no points on the air. So he's going to do his best to try to uh, change all that. Yeah, he's taking a wide line there just off the circuit. Here we got him. They just picked him up. Coming down past the start finish line to do his lap. You can see there Scott Gilman that runs that team, the uh, the Emirates team, as they're called, and uh, we have number 11, which is out of the race. That's a shame for Sami Selyo. Boy, more problems again. What a shame. I mean, Sami was uh, literally snake-bitten in that first event in Dubai. He struggled with the boat. He only qualified 10th. Now, you're talking about a driver from Finland who's got 23 career pole positions, more than anybody else out here currently racing on this tour, and then he got about... 20 meters off the start dock at the start of the race, and that was the end of his day. He's now in a new boat. He's still struggling, Jonathan. We'll have to wait and see. But as we look at Eric Stark now, the youngster out of Sweden, who is such a dominant force in Formula 2. And for Eric Stark, this is his 14th career start. A great move for him to come over with Scott Gilman. Scott Gilman really helping him, as you can see the four-time world champion on the left, advising this youngster. Yeah, and there we have Al Hamli. Uh, Scott Gilman's second driver, uh, based in Abu Dhabi. Uh, Scott used to run the uh, Abu Dhabi team, and it's been taken over recently by uh, Italian Guido Capellini. And uh, so Scott stuck with Al Hamley because he, he feels that his drivers are almost his family. And uh, Al Hamley ran really well out there yesterday. Where is he at the moment? He's not doing too bad a job. He's in, there. He's in fifth position, 1.45. And he almost lost that boat as he came down the straight. Did you see it dive from one side to the other? But he's on for a fast lap. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, Al Hamley, as he comes racing out, this is his third lap, down in that 10th uh, position. So let's see if he can move himself up here. Remember, this is a brand new boat for him. As they change the sponsors on the boat, so uh, over the last uh, four months when we had our spring break, since the first opening race in Dubai, so Al Hamley trying to get back in. Now he missed the opener as, uh, as we can watch here. Let's at this, teetering out the edge as he trying to gather it back up here. Oh, 
almost launched it. Held on, though, Jonathan. Look at that, and Steve. there, that would have been the critical move had he not uh, corrected as fast as he did. Good reactions for that 36-year-old from Abu Dhabi. Alhamdi comes through, fifth position. Oh, he's down to sixth because Thani, his ex-teammate, an another driver out of Abu Dhabi, is up to fifth. He's doing a good job, Thani. I mean, uh, you know, he's looking strong. He's with a very, very uh, uh, good team there. There's no question about it. I mean, uh, I don't think money is any object there. As we see, again, the driver from Sweden there, um, Eric Stark, moved up to fourth position, 1.04. So, from the top, you're... <laughs> Anderson, Torrente still in second, Carella third, Stark now up to fourth, Philippe Chap struggling in fifth position, he's 1.2 seconds off, he hasn't done a second lap and we can't see him out on the circuit at the moment, uh, Al Kwamzi, Al Hamli, Marit Stromoy up to, up to eighth, not bad, Benevente there in ninth, that's an improvement for him for the last race, and Rome's there finishing off in 10th. Yeah, because of this abbreviated format, because of yesterday's conditions where we're running two sessions instead of three, and we are running for a full half hour here in Q2 to determine the pole position and the top 12 places. Right now, coming into this uh, final session, Leo Zhuang didn't get a chance to come out, obviously, not after he blew his boat over and barrel rolled it down in turn six. And then Sami Salio immediately dropped out, didn't even get a lap in. So we're really watching 10 boats, not 12 out here right now. And Thaniel Quimsy, who is uh, pushing as hard as he can, he's dropped down into that uh, sixth position as a uh, he is doing his best to move up. Now, uh, Thani, of course, is no stranger to getting pole positions. Thani, in his career, has a pair. He's had a 54 top six shootouts. And here in France, he has uh, run only uh, one other time. And uh, he's going to do his best here. Last but one turn, boy, there. Finding it quite difficult going into the last turn. Hanging that boat really loose. As you can see him almost out of control as he comes past the start-finish line. Al Kwamzi still in sixth position. That lap was too slow. That was a 48-26. Best lap he's done, but he's still 1.3 off pole. All right, as he struggles now, in anger for the second time is Sean Torrente. He's back out there. He's going to push as hard as he can as we have reached almost the halfway point here in Q2. And there's the driver out of Miami, Florida, as he gets down in that brand new Moore boat. And he is very happy so far with the results of this handling boat. Brand new to him. Remember the last uh, year, he ran five different boat hulls, Jonathan. Five different boats in the year. Still finished third in the championship. Let's see what Sean Torrente can do. As he flies down that back straightaway through four into five now. A quick short shoot, 120 meters into turn number six. Slides it through. Let's see if he can find three tenths of a second to move past Anderson. And he, and he does, Steve. One second ahead of Jonas Anderson in really, really hey, tough conditions because this water has got very, very difficult in the last 10, 15 minutes. Torrente, you could see the boat. It was like a low-flying aircraft going around there, wasn't it? He there threw the gauntlet the down, Jonathan, with a 45.95, the first sub-46 second lap that we have seen. And as you mentioned now, Jonas got the word. He's going back out. This is great, Jonathan, because we're only a third of the way through this drama, and it continues to build. It's tit for tat. It's almost like watching a tennis match. All right, you get one in. I'm coming back at you. Philippe Shep still down in that fifth-place position. He's 2.21 seconds back as they come through. And there you can see the uh, victory team in discussion. As you can see the uh, people talking about it. That's Ragish uh, Eliada. He, uh, he is the uh, team manager, and you saw the uh, uh, David Moore discussion with his driver, Sean Torrente, telling me he did a 45.95. So far, he is the fast driver out here. There we pick up again boat number 27. That's Al Hamley up to third, Steve. 1.13 seconds off, but only a, a tenth of a second away from Anderson. Anderson's out on the circuit again. We've just picked him up there in the shot. Let's see what he can do this time round. All right, Jonas Anderson out there pounding his way around this race course. As Anderson comes out of turn at number three, heading down toward the uh, right-hander. And uh, he is trying his best to try to steal that time away. 
as Alex Corella just went by trying to move up from the spot he's in he's in the fifth spot so Jonas Anderson slowing up obviously not happy with the discussion of the conditions right now he's dropped down to third Thaniel Quimsey has jumped up into that number two spot eight tenths of a second back and Jonas Anderson looks like uh, he's not pleased with his setup he may be going off the race course Jonathan and why not you still have a total of 18 minutes now left to run Steve I think he's just taking his time he's looking for some clear water he's down the far end of the circuit as we see one of the Abu Dhabi boats coming through again Jap back on the water he knows he's got a lot to do here today and Jonas Anderson is he waiting down the far end I'm just trying to see Steve he's just had a shot with us so whether he's coming in or not, I don't know. Great look at Philippe Shep. You went on board with him on the outside. You get a chance to see the multitudes that are showing up early here. We are still now just left uh, less than four hours from the start of the Grand Prix, and already the crowds are starting to follow in here and flow through this very narrow park that we have here in Lac Lamar. It's a wonderful, wonderful uh, day in France. We expect temperatures about 28 or 82 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. So. With very little wind, it's looking good. Yeah, now we see Chiap. He's on the far end of the circuit. He's right down there. He's taking a wide line, starting to accelerate slowly, come onto the circuit. Let's just see whether he can move up because he's been the benchmark for the last three years as we go on board with him, Steve. All right, here he comes right by us now as he heads down this long straightaway, one of the longest straights we've seen. Jonathan, just a bit of a kink, but are you actually letting up there, Jonathan, into one? Yeah, you have to because the conditions won't allow you to float the boat around there. As we got Chap taking a slightly wider line there into turn number two, around turn number three. Conditions, as you can see, Steve, not perfect out there. The boat doesn't seem to want to settle that well on the water. Is he going to come and get a... He's down there now into the right turn. Not a bad turn there. But he never looks fast on the water, although his times are always quick. Boat's running really well there. Last but one turn, Steve, over to you. All right, as we watch Alex Corella come down that short chute, heading into six, the final turn. Can he move up? He's down 1.89 seconds on Torrente. Let's see how far up he goes. He moved up into fourth position, so he gained a second. He's at a 46.79. By the way, Alex Corella has slided and moved himself into that second place position with a 46.22. He's now going for faster a 46 three and he is sitting now just less than three tenths of a second off Sean Torrente trying to get himself into a sub 46 second lap yeah we're still on board with Chiap he's on the far end of the circuit again as we pick up the Abu Dhabi boat there um, but at the moment Corella second he's only 0.27 seconds off Torrente and uh, Al Kwamzi great great position third position so Abu Dhabi team Abu Dhabi in second and third Alex Corella in his seventh season, a three-time world champion, the last two years in a row, runner-up in the championship to that man that he just passed, Philippe Shep, now is going to be determined to see if he can move up another spot. As we watch through here, and they fight their way around this race course, here's Corella on board. We go with him as he comes down his front straightaway. He's slowing up a bit. He is not going to make the serious run, Jonathan. Al Hamley, Steve, up to third, 0.3 of a second. That was a good run. 0.3 of a second off Paul. Carella still hanging on, 0.27. But the guy leading the field at the moment, Sean Torrente from Florida. And Philippe Shep back on the step as he goes flying by. Interesting to see Duarte Benevente up in that fourth position, Jonathan. Yeah, Only good, seven good. tenths of a second off for the driver out of Portugal. And that'll be our next stop on the tour in two weeks. Don't forget to join us for the Grand Prix of Portugal from Portimao as we return for the first time in about four years. We're excited yeah. about going down there to the Algarve. Yeah, we've raced there many, many times in the past and it's been so nice. As we've got Chiap back on the screen there, you can see as he runs down the far end, I think he's putting a bit more pressure on himself now. Water conditions not bad here. This looks like a fast lap. All right, as he comes out of turn number six, you ride with him now. Two-time world champion. He comes by. Let's see where he climbed to. He goes to the first spot. He jumps yeah. to the pole position. 
temporarily here with a 45-6-9. He's now two-tenths of a second ahead of Sean Torrente. So the Frenchman, Philippe Shep, in his home Grand Prix, jumps to the top of the table with a 45-6-9. Let's see if he can hold it, Jonathan. Yeah, We're that almost looked, halfway he, home. He looked good there, Steve. As he came off the last turn, you could see he was really trying. Um, he was very, very fast down the back straight. And the conditions, like I say, weren't absolutely perfect for him, but uh, a great drive there for Chiap and uh, looking good for the race here this afternoon. We take a look at the Portuguese driver, Duarte Benevente, who a minute ago was in fourth place. He's dropped down to six now in his 124 start. As he's had five uh, podiums in his career, he's never had a pole position. And as we watch him uh, drive off. for such a long time in this session all of a sudden he's down in eighth position came out on the circuit we were hopeful that he would have uh, done a little bit better but uh, i don't know maybe he's some got some kind of technical problem and corella there. goes to the top of the charts with a 45 4 1 jonathan and he moves to number one ahead of philippe shep by 0.28 of a second dropping sean torrente down to 0.54 so he is a half a second behind his ex-teammate Alex Corella. Well, as we pick up again, um, the lady driver that's uh, with us here on the tour, um, Marit Stromoy, running a Baba boat. Um, and she's looking pretty good out there, Steve. Okay, she perhaps hasn't got the pace of some of these front-running boats, but I can say one thing, the boat looks as though it's handling incredibly well. They made some changes to this boat since the last Grand Prix of Dubai that we had earlier this year, and uh, she seems pretty happy, so watch out for her this afternoon. Marit Stromoy out in here for her 63rd career start. She has a pole, as we mentioned. She has a victory. She wrapped up 2015 in class when she won the final round in Sharjah, and a remarkable race for her. It was a wonderful day. First time ever in international competition that a woman had come home number one and had beat the boys in a great effort that she put on. And that uh, catapulted her into this season. And uh, right now she uh, looking for her first points. Yeah, we're on board with Corella now. He's obviously not satisfied. He knows it's so tight at the top. He's seen Sean Torrente out there again, Steve, who's coming into the last but one turn. We missed him. He's taken a wide line. Let's just see how he gets on. Yeah, let's check him out. Torrente moves back up into the second spot, sitting there 0.26 six seconds back. And he is pushing hard right now. As Torrente is on the move, let's see what he can do, the driver from Florida. And let's see if he can figure out a way to move himself up into number one with his ex-teammate Alex Corella holding the point at the moment with a 4-5, 4-1. Torrente on the far end of the circuit there, now just taking turn by number three. Coming down into this yellow, the only right-hander that we've got, turns the boat beautifully. Hardly slows down at all as he goes down into the last but one turn, boy, carrying some incredible speed in that moor boat. Looks like this uh, victory team have really got their act together this year. As he comes out of the last turn, boy, Steve, is he going to move up? Let's find out. It comes to the charts and he go to number one. He... Does, does not. not. Ooh, he's point zero one. He is one one hundredth of a second behind his ex teammate Alex Corella from Team Abu Dhabi. So Torrente, you can't get any closer than that, Jonathan. And Ahmed Al Hamli jumps to third, yeah. pushing Philippe Shep down into the fourth position. How about that? We've got Benevente out on the circuit there again now. As we see one of the Abu Dhabi boats coming through, that's the boat number six of Corella. No, he didn't do a fast lap then, but he's on a 45.21. And that's that's some motoring around this circuit. And then we got a 45.42 Torrente, very, very close. Torrente now 0.21 down on Corella. So Corella in the last lap did a bit better. Chap on the far end of the circuit, does he have a technical problem or is he just waiting there? He's still got nine minutes to go to the end of the session. I reckon he's just sitting there waiting biding his time, waiting for the conditions to get a little bit better before he goes probably for what will be his final qualifying lap. Well, as uh, feisty and crafty Philippe Desertin, his team manager, chatting with him, 
Uh, looked pretty animated with him as he uh, parked the boat over on the far side of the race course saying, listen, we got nine minutes to go. There's still time. Let everybody else duke it out here and we'll wait for clear water and make it a mad rush in the final two minutes. Let's see if that's how they play out here because we have uh, gifted time, Jonathan, with 30 minutes in this session. We've got Stark on there now. Last but one turn again. Accelerating well into the last corner, carrying some good speed on that back straight. Turns really hard there, pulling about six and a half G's. Stark at the moment in fifth, and uh, still in fifth position, 0.98 off the pole. All right, so the 28 year old from Stockholm, Sweden, ready to push again with Corella back out there in full flight. And now we can see the veteran and two time world champion Philippe Shep at his home Grand Prix. He got the pole here a year ago, and he's desperately now setting himself up to try to do it again. Chiap coming around the far, again, far end. It's, it's that right under, carrying some good speed. <laughs> Again, he looks really committed as he throws that boat into turn boy number five, comes around into turn boy number six. He's now got 380 meters to the start finish line. Is he going to move up? Nope. Held a 46. Yeah, that's not the fast lap for him. It's no. a 45 6 9, so he's going to have to keep working at it. You can hear Philippe Desertin, who is a winner on this tour, chatting with him, trying to inspire him. Alex Corella just whistled by, and he did a 5-2-2-2, uh, two, two, two. so he continues to hold off Sean Torrente by two-tenths of a second. Ahmed Alhamli now in full flight, pushing hard. As we get a chance to watch, you take a look at uh, Alhamli, almost losing it. Oh my, teetering on the edge of disaster, gathered it back up, somehow held on. Wow, he turned that boat 90 degrees and somehow saved it, Jonathan. I don't know how he did that. He probably doesn't know how he did it himself. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but he, he was he surely was lucky there. As we got Chiap, we've got him on the camera now, Steve. Look, he's right down into five, taking it easy. He's got clear water ahead of him. He knows that. Takes a wide line. You can see he's way off the circuit there as he comes right around and straightens up for the lap. As he did that just a second ago, Alex Corella set the fast time with a 44.58. First sub 45 second lap. He is now eight tenths of a second ahead of Sean Torrente. Now I saw Chiap coming down then. He took a perfect line, Steve. If you look at turn boy number one, he, did, he took such a wide line around six, he could go straight along. He knows this is six minutes to go. This could be his last chance. He's on the far end of the circuit. We don't have him on, on screen at the moment. I see him coming down into the right-hander there on the far end. Yes, we've just picked him up. He's pushing for all he's worth. That boat is absolutely on the edge as he accelerates down into turn number five. No traffic around him again. Nice turn into turn number six. Now we've got that 300 odd meter straight. Is he gonna do it? Is he gonna move up? Is he gonna get pole position? Chiap is... Ahead of Torrente, he moves to number two. He also does a sub 45 second lap on a 44.97. He is four tenths of a second behind Corella. As we get down to crunch time here, Jonathan, less than six minutes to go. And oh my, this is turning out to be something special as they've been flashing by faster and faster. Torrente's on the far end of the circuit. If they can pick him up, he's been two, between boy number two and number three, and he's on a fast lap. All right, we'll keep an eye on him as we take a look at coming by here and pushing as hard as he can as we see uh, boat number five, and that is, of course, uh, Alhamla or Al Kwamzi. He's down in the fifth spot, and he's going to be on a flyer as Eric Stark goes whistling by. He sits down in the sixth position. Torrente just coming into the last turn, down to the start finish line. Torrente goes, goes to the, the pole. pole. Sean Torrente, sorry Jonathan, That's okay. with a 44, <laughs> 5, 6, he's two one hundredths of a second ahead, and oh my, Ahmed Alhamli in tears as this boat stops down in the corner, and Torrente dug a rabbit out of his hat and pulled himself two one hundredths of a second faster than Corella, and right now temporarily has pole position. Yeah, and he couldn't have timed that any better, could he? Because as he, as he crossed the line, Alhamli stopped. They had to put the yellow out. 
uh, and four minutes 40 seconds or oh, they're actually going to hold the time steve so it does give people a bit more time 25 56 25 20 so four minutes 40 to the end of the session they're going to get this boat out of the way and we get a chance to see what happened to the uh, driver from Abu Dhabi as he comes back down into turn number six, the final turn. And he, with a ragged edge, gathers up the corner and he somehow was able to hold it, but then yeah. he had a problem. And as he comes by here and he pulls off the race course and uh, yeah. ending his qualifying in the morning session here. Yeah, I think uh, the way that he came to a grinding halt out of that turn, I would say, my guess is that it's fuel, because Bangy comes out, that's okay, that's okay, no problem there, but then all of a sudden he starts slowing down. If he has an engine going, that would mean that you'd probably see a big, it would lock up and you'd see a lot of spray coming off the back of the boat. Uh, I don't know, maybe... <laughs> corner he was running low fuel and uh, didn't have quite enough to go uh, around the lap so Ahmed El Hamli has uh, stopped the proceedings here in this session and with the time being locally uh, 1115 in the morning don't forget we'll be on the air here uh, for the Grand Prix coming up in a matter of about uh, three and a half hours Jonathan yeah and we can see between turn by and five and six just coming up to the start finish line Philippe Chiap is waiting over there he knows he's got four minutes and 40 seconds to save the day and he knows how important it's going to be to get that pole position he the water's really settling down now so if if he can do it at all it's it's going to be now in the, in in this last couple of minutes and uh, because we know pole position means that you've got the direct line into the first turn boy if he's in fourth uh, which is, oh, I beg your pardon, third, which is where he is now. He has to give Torrente that line into the first turn. And if Torrente can get away, Chappie's going to struggle to overtake him. So yeah, I tell you, he's got to throw everything at this, uh, at this one lap. So instead of it being a six-boat shootout, it is a timely shootout here. As now, they get the rescue teams back quickly out onto the race course. The boats fire up. And as they work their way around this race course here in Lac Lamont, you couldn't ask for better conditions, no. Jonathan. We were struggling to figure out if they could put this race. And of course, Jonas yeah. Anderson down in that eighth place position. He did a 46.96, he's 2.4 seconds back. He will not get a chance to challenge for pole. He is done. There's a problem with the engine. They were scrambling after taking off the engine cowl to see what they could do to get him back out. But uh, obviously Jonas Anderson will have to go back to the trailer, go back into the paddock and maybe change an engine, Jonathan. And that would be bad news for the driver from Sweden. Okay, so we've got the two Abu Dhabi boats that have gone out. They've actually gone past the start finish line. So when Chiap starts up, not going to have such clear water and such smooth water as he was hoping for but he's still waiting down the far end of the circuit there and uh, let's just see how it gets on jonathan we're down to our last few seconds here 43 seconds left so if he's going to do it he's going to have to fire up and cross the finish line here and he comes started so here this will comes. be a last second desperate effort for Philippe Shep to grab pole. This is his last opportunity. He's in full flight, Jonathan. Let's watch him go down the front straight away in a desperate need for pole position. The problem, he's got Marit Stromoy on the outside of him. He's getting all that dirty water. You can see he's had to back off. Oh dear, that could not have been a worse time for him to do the lap. 29.46, 29.47, 48. Is he gonna get round in time to go for another lap? I don't think he is, Steve. I don't think so either, Jonathan. So his string of poles here in France may come desperately to a quiet end here. Yep. Torrente whistling by, knowing he's got time with him. As Sean Torrente trying to hold on desperately from Alex Corella, two one hundredths of a second as Marit Stromoy comes by for the final time. Stromoy moves up to seventh position. That was a good run for Stromoy there, but you know, as you as you can see, the conditions are just so much better now. All right, the two Team Abu Dhabi boats with their last desperate off. Here's Alex Corella, did he jump to the top? He does! He gets a 44-1-3, moves ahead of Sean Torrenti by four tenths of a second as a teammate comes by, moving up into fourth. So Team Abu Dhabi goes first and fourth, 
And they kick Sean Torrente and the victory team down into second place. And you can see Alex Corella <laughs> saluting, going, Yoo-hoo, I got a pole position. Uh, he that- waited to the last few seconds of this qualifying to get the job done, and he did so for Alex Corella. That's his 12th career pole position. He'll be looking for his 12th career victory this afternoon here in France. And you can see the team there, all the Italian team that are running that uh, uh, team Abu Dhabi. Uh, very, very pleased with uh, with what's gone on there. You know, they've been working really hard over the last three months. They've been redesigning boats, tuning engines, and uh, the engines are actually tuned by Brendan Power, um, who's one of the leading engine tuners, and uh, he must be really chuffed because he struggled somewhat last year with his engines, but uh, it looks like he's on top of his game. And you can see um, Team Abu Dhabi uh, congratulated by um, uh, Team Dubai, which are only just up the road because Torrente finished in that second slot. Yeah, great run. What drama in that last minute, John. Jonathan, we saw two places change in the top five. Corella sliding himself up, throwing down a 44-1-3, almost a half a second ahead of Sean Torrente, who thought he had the pull. Shep dropping down to uh, that third spot. And he was almost a second behind. Thaniel Quimsey having a great run. Ahmed El Hamli in that fifth spot. And Eric Stark two seconds back with Marit Stromoy. And Duarte Benevente doing well. He'll start in that eighth spot. And Jonas Anderson with engine problems. We'll have to wait to see what happens with him. And Philippe Roms in that tenth spot three seconds back. So unbelievable drama in that final 30 seconds, Jonathan. Everybody cleared out of the way. And Alex Corella took full advantage to get his pole position. Steve, that is the most exciting qualifying that we've seen for such a long time. And to my mind, that's how qualifying should be. You know, putting the last six out one at a time is not got the same excitement as we saw out there today because it just kept changing and people were pushing harder and harder and everybody was on the limit. And you know, when you look how close they are at the end, wow, that was, to my mind, the best we've seen. Well, listen, for those stations leaving us now, thanks for being with us, and we hope you enjoyed all the excitement of today's BRM qualifying race for the pole position. So for my partner, Jonathan Jones, and all the great international television crew, I'm Steve Michael saying uh, goodbye, and hopefully we'll see you back here in about uh, three and a half hours, 1,500 local, 1,300 UCT, and 9 o'clock along the eastern seaboard of North America for the second round of this 2016 UIM Formula One World Championship. So as we get set to race this afternoon, we say so long from beautiful Evian in France.